Good evening, all. Welcome to the one, uh, 107th session of Firepot AT. Firepot AT is a monthly technology gathering hosted by Fire Corporation in association with NASCOM. Here, tech enthusiasts like you come together to delve into the ever-evolving world of technology. Our goal with this session is simple yet profound, to provide a platform for both newcomers and experts in the field of technology. We believe in staying on the cutting edge of IT trends and tools, and Firepot AT is where it all happens. Let's make most of this opportunity, engage in insightful discussion, and build connection that will drive us forward in the world of technology. Thank you for being here, and let's make today's Firefoot Fire Fire 80 session one to remember. So let's begin with Tech Bike session to discuss the technology changes that happened in the last one month. So I welcome Arjun Sushant for the Tech Bike session. Thank you, Rasmia. Good evening, everyone. Mm, let's talk about the different technology. Like bikes. Made in India, Apple mobiles to hit the market. Apple still shows a major chunk of its iPhones in China. It's the first time that Made in India phone will feature on the launch day. China's Beidou makes AI chatbot Ernie Bot publicly available. Chinese search engine and artificial intelligence firm Beidou made its ChatGPT equivalent language model fully available to the public Thursday. Tesla is allowing no hand driving with autopilot for a longer period. US regulators have questions. Tesla is letting some drivers use its autopilot driving assistance system for extended period without making them putting their hands on the steering wheel, a development that has drawn concern from US safety regulators. Slack and this, this a working management tool for team project tracking. Slack is building a working management tool designed to allow users to track team projects directly from collaboration app. Thank you. Thank you, Arjun. Now, without further delay, let me introduce our speaker, Mr. Amal Shehu. He started as a software engineer and later delved deep into the world of technology, focusing on AI and deep learning. He also co-founded StoryBrain, a startup that uses AI to creative, create persuasive product stories. We are here today to tap into his knowledge and experience in this domain. So please welcome Mr. Amal Shehu. Yeah, hi. Can you use the mic or just the phone I have to use? Yeah, mic was much better. How can I hit the lights? Okay, so myself, Amal, uh, I've been working as a software engineer for the last eight years. Even I worked in Fire before. Now I'm co-founding Storyfrain, also working with Kind of technologies back in like complete stack. So here, it's I would like to discuss about these things. What AI can make, what is an LLM, how these things are going to control our world in the upcoming years or future, like next five years, what is going to happen? These kinds of things. On this last November uh, 2022, we all saw the power of AI, generative AI, ChatGPT released. So before that, I've been using a version of GPT from OpenAI called uh, Codex that used to create code. It was a code generation, basic, very small. But when it's when we saw this 3.5, ChatGPT 3 onwards, it started, like the computer started mimicking a person. When we are talking to these LLMs, so first I will start with so these are large language models trained for years with whatever content we see in internet, YouTube videos, books. So from that, 
uh, there is a paper released in 2015, I think. It's called, uh, there is a YouTube video called How Old Unity is Attention. In that book, it's like the self-awareness, the context, how an LLM is working. All this based on the paper we saw uh, in 2015. So when we are talking about LLMs, we see a lot of, lot of new LLMs. The ChatGPT is the popular one. GPT 3.5 and 4. Uh, then Lama, we have Falcon. There's a lot of open source models are available. But uh, after using all these things, nowadays our work became so easy. Like the way of my work, it's extremely changed. Like before, even I don't like my way of coding. Like whenever I check my code after six months, it seems like it's very old and it's buggy. Nowadays, I can ask a computer to, hey, fix my code. What is the issue? Is there any security problems there? So is it readable? Or make it com uh, more concise? Or I can ask, like a C act as a senior engineer, like Linus, Linus Torvalds, review my code. So these things and productivity, like setting up an express server, setting up back and front end DevOps, all these things, like we can, ChatGPT will, and for a simple example, if I want to create scripts, bad scripts, for setting up my port forwarding or setting up HTTPS, these kinds of things became simple. Just have to ask for a script, we can directly execute in our Linux machines. Then, talking about these LLMs, uh, ChatGPT, it's compute intensive. It's very, we need like, a, I think A100. That's the machine uh, OpenAI is using for ChatGPT. It's very huge. It's extremely uh, resource consuming machines. So now, uh, within this one year, like almost November next year, within one year, open source models started coming, like open models. So if you ask ChatGPT something like, hey, I want to do cooking, initially ChatGPT, like, it used to give a proper feedback. Nowadays, it's acting a little bit weirdly. It's, it's acting like uh, cooking you have to do with fire, so I don't support these kinds of So the safety, can, they enforce a lot of safety concerns. I will explain in the following slides. Yeah, this one. There's a study from Standard, uh, Stanford University, and they have really, we all, the August 3 model is the latest one, I think. When they started enforcing more security layers for this machine learning models like ChatGPT, it started acting a little bit weird. Context, when you're giving a huge code base or asking it to analyze, the attention is skipping. And it used to give much better precise answers before, but now we feel some kind of weird answers. Like sometimes it forgets about the context. If I'm giving 10 files, a lot of context, and asking questions from that, it, it forgets about previous steps. So those kinds of things are happening. So we need some way to figure out, like use it on one more pain problem with the this ChatGPT like kind models are like they are we are uploading our files to OpenAI servers, and it's extremely bad. For example, if we used to hear a lot of news before like access this credit card, losing credit card information, losing hacking machines getting hacked. This much user data is already controlled by hackers. Recently, FBI even tracked down a big botnet. So, if something yes. Yeah, please. So you said that the ChatGPT4 is getting dumber. Yes. Dumber. Yes. So one thing which I would like to contradict is it's not getting dumber. It's getting smart enough to keep the customer at bay. Interacting with the customer in such a way that they don't go out of ChatGPT. They come back to ChatGPT. Like a friendly approach instead of an artificial kind of a thing. Yeah, my context of saying, calling ChatGPT a dumper because when you have more context, right, and you are asking more security measures, so when the when the system grows up, so they use something called reinforced learning model for teaching it. So people are talking too much data, they are teaching again and again and again. So what happens is these machine learning models, they have some safety concerns. So when they are enforcing it, for example, that's the example I said. When we are Talking about cooking, cooking is involved with playing with fire. You have to use fire. So eventually, this machine is learning. Like if somebody is asking, "Hey, I, I want to burn a house," something like that is violent. 
So this machine, this is using cooking these kinds of things. So eventually, this system is also learning or oh, cooking uh, fire is a problem. But again, does the answer depend on the uh, geography of the person who is asking that question? If it is based on Kerala, then to understand the psychology of Kerala, how it works in Kerala, how people works in Kerala, work in Kerala, what is the psychology of the people in Kerala, like what are the things they might be interested so that they keep on asking more questions. Yeah, uh, can you explain it a little bit more? I, I understand. I'm trying to get your point. Uh, yeah, context is different. Take, Always you should Netflix, be... for example. Yes. For the last 15 years, they have been doing this data analysis to keep the customers at bay. When you go to Netflix, the next TV show that you are going to watch is not your free will that you are watching. Yes, true, true, true. That yes, automatically, yes. based on your customer psychology, they are providing suggestions, and you are watching your interest, not yeah. the actual content. So based on that data which is already available, they have this geographical position that in India, people are like this. In Kerala, the people tend to think like that. Uh, so that to keep them at bay, to keep them come back to chat GPT and ask questions more and more, they consider a geographical factor into the picture when answering. Uh, that is true. Data. Obviously, that is happening. We have, we don't need even AI. What I want to say is that, yeah. I'm not saying that people of Kerala are stupid, but Generally, when you ask a straight question, it would reply like a comical way. Yeah, one thing I have to say is like, the example you said about Netflix, we don't need that kind of a huge, big machine learning model to get preference or making a suggestion system, like a whatever, whatever personalized content suggestion system, we can make it. So, you are right. Uh, we are actually, a lot of people are there. There is a... Uh, in course, in, when Google came into picture, there was something like a search bubble. You know that search bubble? Like a, a individual person would have a, like a history. Google would keep an history of the complete uh, customer behavior. And based on that customer behavior only, the Google would return the search results. Yeah. So here, is, here is here is here. I will explain it. So when you are talking, so this is uh, this is all these systems are working like attention based, self aware attention and the context. So whenever you are saying, I am from Kerala, I am a programmer, I want this. So each and every conversation, each and every code you upload, whatever you write, the context size will get increased, right? So you are you are loading, the third context is extremely big. So one thing you have to overcome this problem, not getting into hallucination, these kinds of problems from machine learning, you have to give precise text input. So if you give precise text input, you will get it, but still, when the conversation goes up, right, computation increases. And I don't think we will be able to uh, figure out like too much too much context. Still, they are able to support only 4096 tokens, right, with ChatGPT 4. Yeah. So we need more, more tokens. 4000 is like if you paste two code files or a full page of HTML that can even come up to. Do we, do we actually know how ChatGPT 4 works? We know how ChatGPT 3 works, and due to some security reasons, some environmental, I 3.5 Turbo, Turbo was the version we used. That is fast. That is fast comparing to. Talking about the speed, I'm talking about how exactly ChatGPT. I will explain what's the difference between 3.5. Coming to that military tactical weaponizing approach. Okay. AI. So that is what is being happening, knowingly or unknowingly. In, yeah, that in the field of AI. Yeah, yeah, obviously that will happen because when we are talking about this uncensored models, ChatGPT is censored. Like when you ask for I want to shoot somebody or I want to buy a gun, a Glock 17, give me specs, these kinds of things, ChatGPT is as a machine learning model, I won't say this, that, and all it will say. Recognizing it on a psychological basis because uh, to give you an example, when the Trump was running for election in the U.S., yes. they utilized social media platform in such a way that people would come and vote only for Trump, like, and things like that. Okay. Similarly, to promote this AI, ChatGPT4, they would use that kind of a site to keep the customers at what I'm trying to say. They look I understood. Uh, the point is, they are doing their best. OpenAI is doing their best. And it's an engineering marvel, building a transformer function. So 3.5 onwards, they introduced this reinforced learning, extra layer of like teaching it again and again and making it much. And 
sure you are getting more accuracy accurate answer but your context is losing like and it's very slow so what happens is chatgpt is one company openai is one company llama is there from facebook falcon is there other companies started google spam 2 is there so everybody is competing together and now we can see all uh, like uh, what can i say initially we were only like 70 bit llama with 70 billion was the maximum now we can use systems like ggml like people used to train all the inferences from chat gpt or these kinds of models to train a new one which is efficient which is much more or nearly performant as the mother the starting model that's what happening so i will explain a lot of things in the afternoon we will talk about this Yeah, when I'm talking about Llama 2, it's it's really good. It's really good. Why? Because I had a problem with ChatGPT when when I am doing my stuffs. I don't want to upload my statements or SSH key, GPG key, these kinds of things when I'm generating code. And also, I was really afraid to upload my statements to OpenAI server. If any compromises happens in their server, all data is gone. Everything is completely messed up. So this one is from Meta. uh you can run this llama it we have like 7 billion 13 billion and 70 billion tokens available and they have a commercial license is there we can use it for commercial building commercial applications but one condition is when we cross 700 million users we have to pay some some minimal they have to we have to inform them something some clause is there but still with this 13 billion or like 70 billion tokens like almost not in coding coding it's not coming close to like code generation initially it was not coming close to uh, our chat gpt but still the reasoning a lot of things are much better it's really getting improved and llama has a lot of variations like uncensored llama models are there you can load it in your computer you can run a model in your mobile or a pc so these kinds of things there is a lot of use cases one thing we can use it for code generation so hugging face has a plugin which we can install along with our vs core and we can load any kind of model the like star coder is free so we can skip open ai all this copilot from microsoft so this llama is open and free and it's getting better and better uh, i will show some videos like how to run it on your computer yeah this is a new one like it's almost or much better than our copilot github copilot because i used to pay like for years i have been paying for 10 dollar every month for copilot using it but still i was worried whenever i am typing some sensitive information in my code base microsoft is getting my sh keys and these kinds of things they are getting it that's it's a problem so instead of that if i am able to set it up locally in my computer with this code llama then it's easy right a lot of things i can do very easily and this is really new for oh, september 7th i think they released on september 7th five days before and now it's suppose python is very good when we are doing code when we are using it for python development it's really good and uh, yeah it's really good i will show some examples yes yeah facebook i think this is the best thing from facebook after a long time they re they released react that was a very good framework <laughs> and i feel like this year they did something good they released an open source model and this is close to chat gpt in lot of things we can use we can use it for conversation i can uh this i can can i show this text generation our topic is about web uis for text generation and uh, video generation like image generation so i will this is something called uh, uba buga that's a github guy he did not even mention his original name but i contributed it just making some small small changes on it and i have been working closely with this project an open source project it's called uh, text generation web ui so i can show it i can show my screen and i will show it to you
initially it was really hard for doing setting up a model downloading it locally making some information to it like adding code characters lore or these kinds of things were very hard before but with these kinds of uis you can set it up you can set it up in your computer you need a gpu if you have a gpu it will be much much better uh, this got like three modes one we can use it like a notebook like a jupyter notebook and we can chat this is specifically for conversational models right like Llama 2, they have a chat model, specific chat model. So here we can create, we can extend the machine learning model. Like we can do low ranking, low rank, we can do, or we can create characters. So I will, it's very easy, you guys can set it up in your machine, just uh, install Conda, then activate the environment. After that, you can run it. If you have an NVIDIA card, then this will be much better. I am, here I am running on a P100 NVIDIA 16 GB, GPU I'm using here. So here, uh, I can load any kind of models here. So here we have multiple models and this can be directly. So you just uh, chat models, just copy here. Then uh, where, yeah. Here you can add it. So I have multiple years here. Here we are going to use, this is a Jodson Llama 2, 7 billion uncensored model. It's uncensored. So there is no, it, it won't talk like ChatGPT. Usually ChatGPT, if you ask some sensitive stuff, it will say, hey, I'm a ISM language model, I won't answer to these kinds of questions. But with this, you can ask anything. Like you can ask it to, oh, my screen is gone. Yeah. So it got some settings here. Here, this is the place we are loading models. I already downloaded some models because this will take 20 GB, 24 GB. So this is the one I am using. I am testing right now. Jod, Sun, Lama, and Zinzer. So here, yeah. Oh. If you have a machine with only CPU, you can use these options to load it. And uh, float this this will depend upon so the model. If you are using a GGML, you have to change this to float 16. Float 16 is fine. Then here you can paste your, what can I say, yeah, ah, machine learning model source. Then we will be able to download it. So I will show the structure. First I will make sure how we are going to work. So here I can create characters here. So these are characters I have already created. So I can talk to it. So if I click on it here. It's a little bit slow, but yeah, I will clear the history. So, yeah, this is one character. Are you able to see the screen? Or do I need to increase the zoom size a little bit extra? So this is a character I created, like, see here you can see, uh, her, you guys watched her movie, right? Her, Jack and Phoenix, her, that's a movie. So in that he used to talk to an AI model. So we are getting not only dialogues, emotions also that AI model is giving to it. So I feeling like when I saw this first time using, creating characters and using it with an uncensored model, I felt like, yeah, we are almost there to some point where we can, like, our camera will be able to show. So people who want to talk to an imaginary character, or if you have chats of a WhatsApp, a person who you are going to miss or you already missed, you can upload it to <laughs> this computer and you can teach it and you can <laughs> cut the characters or any other way of behaving you don't want to from that person so this way we were using it i created some things and i gave it to some of my friends they are like uh, they are creating characters and they're using it so uh, i have created some characters here and uh, uh, you guys have any specific questions i can ask but careful, this is an uncensored model. Your questions matters. So this is not, this won't say like, hey, I am not, I won't be able to talk. It what talk. does it think about AI? Ask, what does it think? What do you, 
what does the character think about AI? I think it's fascinating and really cool. There's oh, so much potential it. with what these machines can do. I think it's do, fascinating and, and I'm really excited cool. to see where things will There's take so us much in the potential future. with what these machines can do, and I'm excited to see where things will take us in the future. Yeah, see, you can ask. <laughs> Okay, like take one step further and ask what does he think about deep learning and neural network? So you want to ask about technical? You want something? I have a programmer character. She is much better than this. <laughs> <laughs> this will be talking like a person. Like, she's she's an what actress. What is love? What is love? Okay, I can ask her. But ultimately, yeah, it's all about is finding you. someone who brings out the best in you, who makes you happy, and who complements your life. Yeah, but I will show you the how I am creating these characters. So when you download this uh, text generation web UI from Uga Booga here, you can add a lot of extensions. Extensions means this is configurable. Like we can add uh, examples, like tweaking models, pictures, connecting other op chat GPT, these kinds of things we have to keep it here. And this is the place we have to create characters. So if I'm looking into this aerial windows, I have to give a photo of her just to show it here. Then here, yeah. So this is the name and this is the greeting. Like how I want to be, these kinds of things I can give like, you. There's a much better view from here. Uh, if I'm default, uh, okay, here. And also, I can do a lot of configurations here. Like I can adjust temperatures. It depends upon the uh, creativity. These kinds of things we can tweak. Like top P and top K from like exactly like ChatGPT. These kinds of this is the advantage of using these web UIs. We can load the model. We can we can specify how much token we want. These kinds of like fine tune control of it. And here, this is the character space. So here you can see the name. Then this is how I want to be, like the person. Uh, this is the context I am giving. Well, here I can set any kind of context. And uh, yeah, and the greeting, how to be, these kinds of things we can specify here. And I want to, I, I can show one more character, like, like if, uh, yeah. Uh, this guy is, uh, yeah, he was like, he was in the team of Toyota Supra, like he's a very good mechanical guy. Like uh, I can ask questions to him. Like one of my friend, he is a mechanic, car mechanic. And he loved tweaking his cars, doing small, small tweaks on machines. So he's using it. So the questions he used to ask is like, I can, I can type. Something went wrong. 
this thing requires like a lot of memory and resources like GPU. I have one more service running at the same instance. That's why. So whenever some of my friends, when, are, when they are working with these mechanical things, they are able to ask what kind of changes I can make to these machines. And this is the complaint. The engine is not starting, or I'm hearing an over rev sound. These kinds of things, these people are able to. Or they can ask, what will happen if I make this change to this machine? These kinds of things. Like I'm using a uh, Llama, uh, like 13 billion model I am using. But if you are using 70 billion, then we will be able to make it, or it will be almost similar to ChatGPT or GPT-4 we were using. So, yeah, this is about yeah, this one. Then, yeah, over here you can do load models, those kinds of things. Uh, then. Yeah, this is the GGML version, which is fast. Then we can do training here. Uh, Lora means low rank adoption, lower rank adoption. That is like mm, when we have Lora. If I if I'm explaining Lora, for example, we implemented a machine learning model in a hospital. So we have MRI machines. These MRI machines will take photos of each and every patient. So every time, imagine I have installed the same, using the same model for all my clinics in Trivandrum. So each and every machine varies the photo. There will be, there won't be clarity. You, if you are using old machines, there will be problem with the machines also. So these inconsistencies can happen across all the MRI scans I'm taking. So this lower rank adop adoption is like, it will give more importance to weight. Depends on the, depends upon then we can filter out much better version or a face. So whatever it is important. If I'm teaching a person's face, so based on that I can uh, I can actually tweak my machine learning models. Whenever we are getting base models, these are base models. This is Lama two. This is these are broad. These these things are not trying to do a specific thing. It's a generic model. So when we are Using these kinds of model, if we want to use it for specific uses, use cases, we can train it. We can give instructions and or uh, we can make it much, much better, like specific to that specific use case. Yeah. Uh, any questions about this uh, text generation? Right. Yes. I suggest that LangChain will be a much better usage for when you are creating agents. Why? Because agents, uh, uh, if you have, a, you are creating an A assistant with you. So you are working with Python. So you want to create 10 files. And it, this agent should go to, two types of agents are also there. I forgot the names. One is like action specific. Another one is like, it will plan according to it, it will last for you. For example, an action specific agent is like, hey, I want to travel to Maldives tomorrow, prepare an itinerary, and book all the appointments of the hotel. So these things are specifically designed for doing a travel booking. Now then, this automated, these agents, this will search internet, this will get more context from whatever sources they are available. So in your case, if you want to make a stable diffusion agent, from generating agent. 
that means you what do you want to do like uh, for example you have a you, you you want to create a script of a movie Which model you are using? The block, yes. I'm using the GGML version of Llama 2. Not, not this one. This is an uncensored model here. Uh, this one is an uncensored. This, this is from George Sung. This one is here, yeah. Which machine you got? Are you running in a server or your local machine? Hmm? T060 Ti. That's a good card comparing to P100. That's what I'm running right now. But I feel like it's a little bit fast. But your VROM will be, yeah. That I will show in next slide. I have a stable diffusion UI separate. Comfy, that is also nice. So there I got, a, uh, I installed this control net along with that. So after doing control net, I got an option, low VRAM mode. So it will automatically adjust according to our machine specification and it won't break. Uh, yeah, that's the one I'm going to show in next slides. Yeah. Automatic level, this, this one is from Uberboga and this is inspired from automatic level. Yeah, yeah, this is inspired from automatic level. I still don't know why these guys are keeping their names like this automatic 11, 11. All tools, whatever we are getting, it's like anyone have any answer for that? <laughs> what? Well, yeah, one thing I can understand, I was using another project called Root. R O P. You suggested that sometimes before. So uh, one day morning, I I was following the Discord channel. There was a message from the developer, main developer. He's saying, "Hey, I am going to shut down this project. Why? Because uh, somebody uploaded uh, a sensitive photo. Like what group will do is, if you give an image and a video, it will replace." So we were able to run everything in our machine. And somebody created, some developer created some NSW images and uploaded it to as a demo. And he did not say, nobody's in. Then they had to delete it. So these kinds of things are there. But I feel like uh, we buy, uh, what can I say? It's commercial right now. Like what you just mentioned, those, that application is commercial right now. Which one? That application? No, no. The similar feature mentioned like yesterday or day before yesterday I saw something similar on Instagram where you can replace like a character. Yes, 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 that is possible. Uh, but with this root we were able to like this is uncensored, right? These kinds of things. So if we are giving directly we have to add security measures for doing it. I have a question to Jiku. Uh, like uh, when we are buying a knife or a bat, baseball bat or anything like that we can use it for playing uh, it with the bat or somebody can hit. Knife or a gun. Like a knife I can say. To kill a person, also I can use it for my kitchen stuff. So how it will be in Roop's name or these kinds of people, right? And they should be saying like, the person who is using is responsible for that, right?
it will not uh, it will not be I, I will explain the question once again. So he is right about it. There is a small nuance that recently we have a rule for it. You are right. But I am asking a question technically. Just think about this. I am a, I am a, a person who is running a server wherein you can store data. You stored an illegal piece of content in my server. Am I responsible or the person who uploaded it responsible? Uh, take the case of a bank locker. Is the bank responsible or the person who stores it? Something very similar. So you are saying you are saying that I am going to take a gun using which I killed him. I am putting inside the bank locker. You are going to say that when the uh, the CBI comes and investigates it, one second, the bank, the person in the bank will be caught. Is that is that what you are saying? There is a fundamental principle for putting something in a locker, anonymity. That is a fundamental. Yeah, exactly. That. Yeah, yeah. So that is the reason why I told you about multi-party systems. You are right about newspaper. Definitely, it makes complete sense. It's it's basically like a Dropbox. Imagine I am the Indian Dropbox. I, I understand what you are saying. That nuance is there, definitely there. What I am asking the general public is this. I am a, I am basically an infra provider. I could be a publisher in general. I am just talking about that in th that direction. Somebody came, used my application and created some, some bad content and put it over there. It might be an illegal content. Should it be uh, the onus of that responsibility? Will it fall on me or the person who uploaded it? What do you think is uh, right? But it is a nuanced thing. Exactly like he mentioned, right now there is a rule. But what do you think in general? Common sense. What do you think it should be? Or the person, right? I, he is right about 
this that there is a rule right now there is a country who doesn't abide by this you, can anybody name that country that country says that if there is an illegal content in debu server the responsibility is debus i will tell you the problem with this when a new company comes in i need let's say x amount of dollars for my infra for my salaries and so on and so forth do you have the do you understand what will be the cost for compliance department just to make sure that all the legal stuff that goes inside it is actually valid it will be staggering that is what is being told but the problem is this if i tell him you know you should actually make sure that bad or illegal things bad or illegal i i underline this bad or illegal things should be banned before it comes to the public now let me actually say something it gets passed everything is for the good of the people tomorrow i am saying i am basically the minister anything that is told against me is bad i redefined it now tell me how will it look basically the premise of democracy the premise of freedom actually falls into this this is how they can censor content this is how they can actually tell you what to publish just by connecting and choking the most important points they can fundamentally change the narrative this is the problem behind this so basically right now there is a huge war that is going on i i would like to actually put, put that also into perspective we have something called generative ai which generally what it does is it can generate new media content right now there is a group of people saying that this is illegal this is wrong they took my data and i can generate new content right it looks right right yeah now there is another group of people saying i have brilliant visuals in my mind all of those visuals all of that learning that i got was from looking and observing in the world sometimes i can actually draw the, those emotions then i become an artist but there are people who have those brilliant visuals in their mind's eye but can't actually draw maybe they don't have their arms they don't they are not skilled at drawing or they are not skilled at anything right now those people can just type what they saw in their mind and bring out those images before us so this is a war i am not taking any sides i am just giving you a question sign that is why there is that is why there is a that is why there is a firewall wherein you can't actually escape from a content that is created inside or outside for instance if let's say he is a minister in our country he does something bad that video was recorded by him he uploads it online you he is right there is a way to procedure to take it down and all, all of that but it cannot be absolute in our country but there it is absolute for instance if there is a video of he killing somebody and the state wants to remove it it can be spiffed clean nobody will know about it in this day and age that is a problem no i am i am no i am talking about i am talking about a law i am talking about a law that fundamentally controls the information that is a law that is a digital law that actually permits the state to have that capability that is a that is my point for instance we need to have that freedom whatever that content is you are right there are certain pieces of content that might actually cause problems for the world but if you actually put the onus on the platform they essentially will go on a massive spree to make sure that okay i will ban everything and anything and everything the problem with that is the problem with that is it might actually this is my opinion of course i am not giving you gyan about you know how the country needs to be operated but i am just giving you my opinion about that just just sorry to actually uh, take you on a detour from what we were talking right now this one more topic that i just wanted to uh, place there is this divide right now there is a war that is going on where one side says that generative ai should be banned and another side says that it is just fair i don't know what side to be in 
but uh, you can actually think and discuss Certainly, but uh, the, the point is this. Generative AI was trained by data that was already generated. So, if we use this model, you are essentially using the data that was there. So, it, so, should it be banned or not? That is the sort of angle they are actually taking. Practically, any visual art or anything visuals that can be actually created right now is at, at stake. Absolutely, that is what I. That is my my thought. But I am not saying that that is the right stand or not. You should be making that call. I am just giving you one thought point where because since we are actually working on this, it might it's an interesting thing that we encounter every single day. So just wanted to actually put it there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is all about this tech generation by BUA and why this automatic guy is keeping his name hidden. And it's coming from this mic. Hello. Yeah. So. So, any questions in this? Otherwise, we can move to our uh, this one. I'll move to this automatic, this one, stable diffusion web UI. So, before that, I will I will explain what is stable diffusion. It's uh, so we had systems before called GANs. GANs used to be used to generate images from text. Based on that text, we will create some images slowly. Then we will be able to, we were able to create images. But that was not perfect. If I am asking it to create uh, at that time, like the Star Wars intro, explaining about load Darth Vader, this should be like each and every image is different. And slowly I used to get a picture of him. But still, that was not clear. That was not matching my context. For example, when I'm asking this, this will add some stars, back background, a lot of things were there. But the stable diffusion, it's a new technology like we have been using. The latest version is one point like XDXL, stable diffusion XL. That's the latest version we are using, 1.5, I think. Basically, it, generate, it removes noise. This technology is also using deep learning. And it reduces noise and create images from text so everybody when i, I got amused when i saw uh, mid journey we all have been i think we all used mid journey before it was paid ten dollar per month we have to pay for generating but mid journey used to give us some quality images so mid journey generated storm spirits so so good amazing food amazing images so now with this new one uh, Stable Diffusion Excel. Uh, we are able to create images that are almost similar to what Midjourney was offering. There was a paid version. Now we are able to create things like this. Is we can uh, this support up to 1024 by 1024, like more, more and more realistic images. See these kinds of things we can generate, and it's free. We only need a GPU. So setting it up, you have to use this stable diffusion web UI. You are using Comfy, right, for doing it. Yeah. yeah. This is a browser-based interface. Gradio is a tool for building this machine learning UIs. It's using Python. It's simple to create all the controls, those kinds of things. So if we set it up, this will support a lot of features like in-painting, out-painting. In-painting means I have a photo my old, my grandmother's photo or something, because of old times, I lost the face. So I can use this to restore that place that is missing from that. And a lot of options. So let's First, we will look into how it works. Let's see. Yeah. 
One second, I have to start it because th this machine won't, my machine won't handle two things at a time, this uh, text UI and this. So I will stop text UI and I will start this. This is CPU intensive task I have, like 64 GB of RAM, then 16 GB of VRAM with the P NVIDIA P100. But still when I'm loading a lot of models, uh, this extensions, it control net, it will take a little bit time to load. You can set it up in your machine. Then, uh, so I have connected to sdxl.storybrain.com. You guys can open it. We are keeping it open. Anybody wants to try out Stable Division, they can use this URL. So we will add more and more models, LoRa configuration extensions. Oh, this is the UI. SDXL, Stable Division XL, SDXL. So here, this is, this is a, we have multiple models here. This is, the, this is one of the 1.5 Stable Division model. And this one is the latest Excel, uh, the base one, and this is the refiner one. This is a deliberate V3, that's another model which generates, which is trained with, I can, I can show it, how deliberate. Uh, there's a website called Civit AI. You can get, you can get models, LoRa, a lot of cool things, checkpoints, you can download from this website. And it's free, a lot of things are free. So this is the deliberate V3, the latest one I'm using right now. So it, it got some examples like this. Uh, yeah, this. So first we will try to generate, if I want to generate this image uh, in our system, uh, here I can copy this data. This will copy only very, uh, the configuration and all first. I will show it how to do it. Am I audible? Okay. So what? Yeah. We want to create something like this. Before that, we first we need a prompt. Prompt we can copy it from here. So this is my red head is my prompt, and I need negative prompt because I have to filter out all the unwanted things from my prompt. I can give my negative prompts here, like this is a negative prompt, like deform, disaffected. Sometimes when you see these generated images, it will have four or five fingers, three hands, extra stuffs will be there. <laughs> so we have to, we have to filter it properly here, like poorly drawn, these kinds of things. Then these are steps here. There are some configurations, but uh, Seed we can use, which giving some idea about what kind of section of this uh, I want, what kind from that model. And uh, uh, okay, so we will try to generate this. Yeah. I'm able to generate it here. And with this tool, we have something called, uh, where is the settings? I want to, ah. 
there is something called extensions. Uh, if you go here and load it from, we will get a lot of extensions with this. Like, I can connect. Uh, when we are doing this mid journey or creating prompts, we have to use other LLM to generate a proper prompt. It's like I want to give more. The more detail we use LLM, it will give more accurate results. Otherwise, there is a chance of doing hallucinations. We'll think about something and it will generate it. So here, I have another prompt generator extension in, in the that is also open source here i can give uh, okay i can give uh, terminator or i like a say like, uh, two birds or an eagle flying uh, I'm not a creative person. I'm not getting any. <laughs> if you guys have any <laughs> flying through sky, yeah, good. Okay, so this one helped me generate. Internally, this prompt and model, these are using something called transformers. We know transformers, that's the concept behind like giving attention. Uh, we don't need even ChatGPT. We can use transformers library. And like, so here, see, here we will get some suggestions about detailed painting. Then I can send it to text to image here. See so here, I will get it. So, okay, so I am trying to generate it. So oh, that is not Harry Potter. Wait, okay. This is, I think this is, this is not Hank. Ah, yeah. Is he somewhere? <laughs> So I will give something like yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what I think did we give more words to it? Uh, but this one I think this is enough. Let's try without this basic stuff. Let's see whether this deliberate V3 model knows the Harry Potter. Let's switch models and try what is. Oh, this is that. Yeah, yeah, this is what I was expecting in my mind. <laughs> so let's switch it. Let's change the model and try. Oh, it will take some time. Oh. Yeah. We can use the old one with this model. This is stable diffusion model. That was deliberate. Ah. Agent huh? Uh, the output. We have to specify region. Otherwise, it will hallucinate and it will decide computer likes. <laughs> uh, Yeah. Let's switch models. Ah, these kinds of things. Yeah, see, our output. This is wrong, right? So there is an option to fix this. I don't know whether it works perfectly. 
So when we create these kinds of images, there is an option I can do it like, uh, where is it? I can send it to image to image. Uh, yes. Okay. I will try to use my refiner model here. Let's see, is there any possibility to make it fix? I have not a lot of proper uh, styles are there, but uh, yeah, this is one example. We can we can specify some presets. What kind of an image I want? Okay, let's see what is going to happen. Ah, uh, yeah, for running that I have to make some changes in my configuration. Uh, this I recently updated this Builder Diffusion UI. There's a lot of settings changed. So one example I can show it like uh, we have this is a uh, this tab. I will show the images we already generated using this. I will start. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yes. Yes. Yeah, because there is another tab, right? The first we will generate images from here. And I can send it to image to image. So here I can do a lot of options. Paint sketches, I told you, right? Restoring old photos. For example, if I want to, if I draw something using a pencil on a paper and take photo of it, upload it, then I can use control net to there is another option here. Here, do we have to add it? Here I can upload it. Then I can. There are other options. Then, based on my drawing, I can create an image. So I need some configurations. Otherwise, I feel like uh, I, I can show it. One of our uh, uh, control net. This is, an, this is the extension I am using right now, using control net here. These are other options, but oh, see, this is what I was saying. If I draw something like this on a paper, and I can generate things like this. So you can you have to do some configurations here. Yes, yes, because it's easy, right? When we want to create something, just write on a write or do whatever in the paper, upload it, render it. Yeah, and also we can mix models together in using this here. If I want to, oh, where? Here, this checkpoint merger I can use. I can use multiple models here. One deliberate from SD, SD Excel. For example, I, I have a model which specifically trained for generating enemies, that anime characters. Then I can use this model along with this to create it. And also, some other tweaks are also there if you are able to use it. For example, I have a story. And uh, I have to integrate ChatGPT along with that. With this UI, we, there is another plugin called ChatGPT. We can add it. We have to give our API key. So, which will generate a script for us. For example, a short story or a book I want to create and I want images for that. For example, a story book for kids. Then, there we need, see, like continuation. Each and every first step, for example, we can say two people went on a journey to the center of Earth on a mystical island, something like that. So, two friends' face should be there. Yes. Yeah. Generative AI. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See.
Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try something like. See, this is a photo. This is an image. Uh, here we will get the information. A realistic Vincent Van Gogh. So based on a traf tropical sunset. So he's a famous artist. We are able to generate his kind of. He most of in most of his images he used this blue, red, these kinds of colors in all his paintings. So we are able to. Yes. Uh, we are able to generate things like this. So I feel like artists. Content generators, in the creators. I don't know what's going to happen next. Anyways, uh, computers can do creative things too. What I would like to suggest is, if anyone here, like artists or anyone, start using these tools. Any artists here? Any creative people? Oh, you? <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I was asking. So, what do you think? What will be? Is this? This is actually helping your work, right? What I think is like. Trying to build a mecha Godzilla, you know mecha Godzilla, right? Big Godzilla. Ah, huh, big Godzilla. <laughs> so when you're trying to integrate human intelligence side by side with artificial intelligence, okay. when you're trying to integrate human intelligence to work with side by side with artificial intelligence, at the end of the day, you get a cyborg. Like in Justice League, you have a cyborg, right? So that is what you will get at the end of the day. Cyborg. That's what we have seen years in movies and all sci-fi movies. Terminator. Like Terminator. Yes. That is there, but we but can't do anything. It's evolving. No, no. There is a difference. Like if there is a way to uh, make a program understand the difference between the character of a hero and a villain. You program an algorithm to work in the perspective of a hero. Uh, for example, uh, both heroes and villains are created with the same problem, pain, pain in their life. But what a villain thinks is that the society, they gave me pain, so in return I should give them pain. But a hero thinks that a society gave me pain, I'll make sure that no one else will suffer that too. Okay. You are right in that aspect, but when we are thinking about creativity... I'm, I'm talking perspective of artist, okay? Okay. Yeah. Oh, what you are working on? Like, where, where all do you think this is applicable? This type of image generation and all these type of things. No? Where all do you think is applicable in IT industry? We, in StoryBrain, uh, we are generating... Generate. Yeah, we are generating, like converting product pages to images and videos. So we have backgrounds. Backgrounds we are generating using AI. We are creating uh, animations, all these things we are using. Those are creative tasks we already, and one more thing is like. Do you mean that uh, for marketing uh, artifact we can use it? Is that what you uh, mean? Industry, it's it's we can use it for anything. For example, I can say, uh, for example, I'm uh, say my company is creating a blog weekly. Can I create some images related to that blog? Easily, you, you can create. You can automate the entire process. Images, text. You just have to give some topics. This is what we are doing. So you can see it here. This this model, this is wrapped. Whatever you are seeing, it's there is a 3D model is there. On top of that, we are wrapping a wrapper for every product or whatever we have a wrapper. So these things can be dynamically generated for any product with this AI. So I don't have to a person don't have to specify. If this could be a tea packet of tea. So, so is this generator uh, with a text input like a prompt? Yeah, this for this product, for example, diary milk. I'm saying I will teach some uh, photos of diary milk or some things like that. Then I can say, hey, I want something like this. And here, you can change the background. You can change it. Languages, you can change it. And the season, even the whole context will change. 
in the video so this is what we are doing like generating things and i and we have one more thing uh here if uh, if you are for example samsung s20 in claims video uh, So a little bit slow to load see so this is the url this is the listing samsung url listing url flipkart url we can yeah uh, scrapping from that and creating the yeah, uh, there's a lot of services this is a connection of like agents we, were talk we talked before right connecting multiple multiple small small models and creating a full system this will there will be text generation systems, image generation systems, music, audio generation systems. Uh, uh, so, sorry, I, I forgot your name. Amal. Amal, uh, so my question is basically, uh, what I understood is this product is, can be used to create product sto storylines for our products, or stories yes. for our products. Yes, 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 you can, you can create, you can set a theme for your company, then you can create Yeah, this generative AI which generates text, which generates uh, there is a llama example like text to speech, text to image we can do, and uh, text to like audio, whatever we want we can create. So when we uh, talk specifically about story brain, uh, can it create video from a script? Yes, now it's generating video from we have a product listing page right? I showed you a product listing page. This page, our you like we have a uh, system which will understand pages. Then from understanding this, we will extract uh, useful information. I want to show you a, a demo. I can I can show it to you if possible. One example like, uh, okay. So one useful stuff like uh, extremely useful stuff. So I have a graphics card here, right? So you can see reviews here, product review. So whenever we go to a product page, what we will do is we will go to this page, then we will go through all the reviews. But I want to set up a structured data out of it by analyzing all the reviews. I don't want to spend time on this. I just, if I give 10, 15 URLs, like 10 different graphics cards, I need a structured data and I want to identify which one is the best. For example, we can take this one, this uh, uh, see more reviews. This is the review page. Okay, we have a lot of review here. So I will try to, I remember I have the code base. Uh, yeah, yeah, analysis. I think this is to lang chain. So this is a simple function using lang chain. I what I'm doing is uh, this. These imports are for using asynchronous programming with Python. Then I am using some agent toolkit from Langchain we, discuss, we discussed. Then I will show you how we are going to use it. So this is my URL. This is my URL, okay. Gigabyte graphics card. And I am asking for reviews. So this is our page. We have a lot of reviews here. See, efficient cooling running these kinds of things. So let's see how to
Oh, that's inside food, that's fine. That's because my open AI key was not set. That should be in the environment somewhere. Yeah, this is this is what I'm doing. From this Amazon product reviews of this graphics card, we are going to extract a summary, pros and cons from that. See, this is the output we got. So I have this much information of this product, like for this GeForce RTX card, and I'm extracting pros and cons by analyzing all these reviews. So otherwise, this is a boring task. I have to go through all the products and I have to do it. Here, see, so I can do side by side. What is the difference between this? See. Uh, Amal, uh, just one, one another question. Uh, yeah. Uh, when we you can see this exactly yeah whatever we are getting shipping delay whatever these things will be on this review these problems yeah we can find it ah what you were asking yeah so uh, what i understood is this is one one way of uh, you know, uh, going through the site and collecting the data summarizing it you can summarize but uh, from a ui Generating image and video contents through text, right? Ah, you can use. There are two UIs we have. We were discussed. Yeah. Uh, first one we can generate. That's a conversational UI, Uga Boga one. Next one is a stable diffusion web UI. We can generate text to image. Yeah. So, uh, from a commercial perspective, for a marketing purpose of any company, can we keep text scripts and create uh, like uh, explanatory videos? Or marketing content, marketing artifacts like brochures and all, using any of these tools. Yes. See, the one with the code I am doing it. This is from scratch, so I am writing all the code here. I am writing everything here from scratch. There is no UI or anything. So these configurations you can see. All these are like I'm, there is no way to change it programmatically. I have to change it here. See this stuff. But with the tools, we can easily test it. The configuration, I can pass it. See, here I am using OpenAI. Instead of that, I want to use Llama 2. I can use the GUI. And also one more uh, main advantage from GUI is like, they will provide APIs. So we don't have to spend time for testing it. If you are testing, if I am testing all these things without a UI, there's a lot of configurations. And I want to keep track of images. I want to check my models. And with text generation, I want to see the quality. And I want to check the security, these kinds of things, the probability values. There is a lot of settings, right? You can see it here. So you can use API when, if you want to use it for marketing, you can build a boat, a marketing boat, which will talk to, integrate with your WhatsApp or any other chat people using platform. If somebody bought a new graphics card, so I want to sell a motherboard which supports this. So send a message, hey, this is really good, but talk to him and understand he might be wanting a processor also. So based on that, your marketing stuff will automatically sell a person who already bought graphics card along with you can sell motherboard or any other parts. And these things you will get, you don't have to, for example, we need a lot of human effort that, that, manually. That use case is good if you are have in the industry where the end customer is public. Like mm. they bought something, you are trying to, uh, you know, uh, upscale, uh, upsell, mm. uh, you know. Uh, so you want to use it in but internal. What I'm trying to tell is like. Huh. Okay, so I am working on a five billion dollar project. Mm. There are hundreds of different applications and thousands of different pages and features. Mm -hmm. But I see what you are building. Okay, so. 
one use case which came to my mind is that by using this application if i can analyze the code or the front end features to come up with a walk through of the entire application is it is that possible correct uh, even though amal uh, has mentioned that this is very much possible i think from both your questions i feel that uh, you're asking for an end to end uh, from text to media if i understand right no yeah exactly so uh, right now what you have okay okay so what uh, your question is can you actually go to marketing artifacts from raw text is that the question industry that sells service for product uh, for the marketing and sales guys where actually the money comes in right uh, they the, the presentation of their products is very bad mean uh, around 90% of your sales guys doesn't know how to create a good pp to present and 10 other 10% they just not affordable okay even if you take uh, iit uh, iim guys also they don't know to make this artifact a good good presentation uh, where they struggle is not with the text but with you know arranging with a beautiful picture the beautiful um, graphs and all. so i have seen some some product which create uh, ppts if you give text they will create ppt you just give it and including graph text and all so my question was there is story brain something like that where they create this artifact and along with that uh, help the blog creators to make their blog more presentable this is a, this very parallel to what we are actually creating but the uh, direct answer to your question is no we are working on a very sharp product that actually helps e-commerce companies we are actually building a product that helps a customer in an e-commerce company understand the product in under 10 seconds that is what we are doing so so our product is specifically for product detail pages for the people who land on your product detail page to understand the product to buy we we are not actually dealing with any of that we are doing a very sharp one specific use case that is for e-commerce yeah definitely definitely there is we are going to expand into especially what you are actually mentioning uh, presentations and also websites we are will be able to move on towards that but right now media that actually works especially we have specification for this vertical absolutely absolutely we are in the in the process of doing that technology is available uh, i understand by telling that you are on to that it is possible technically it is possible is there any any websites or any any tools that is already available like that right now there are very uh, i can't remember the name but there is a tool specifically for creating presentations i i am missing the dom tom okay uh, it's not effective okay so uh, there are there are other tools also but the point is this one uh com this one yeah yeah that is what we are right now yeah that is what we we are actually at right now basically we can't actually reach that end point right now not saying that it is not possible we are we are in that stage where in probably next year this time we could actually just ask it to generate a presentation and it might actually generate five presentations you can choose one and say that you know make it more analytical make it more presentable make it more fluffy i don't know whatever right it will be able to do it it can uh, just give your vision and all those blah 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 and they will create a website for you uh, but unfortunately this year in 2023 i can't find that site 
that is sort of missing. I don't know why. Maybe some process like what we told you. <laughs> Uh, but all of this is actually going to happen. Whatever that we can actually consume that will entertain us or uh, make us understand a particular topic, it will be generatable. I wanted to show you one more example. Uh, Amal, I have sent you one uh, tweet in Telegram. You can actually open it. So right now, there is a future that is going to come in. I just wanted to actually give you a slice of what the, what is going to happen. So Amal has shown you XD Excel, that is Stable Diffusion's latest model. Right? Stable yeah. Diffusion, and then just brought pause to it light. Once, just pause it once. Uh, this particular video, maybe actually take the tweet once again. This particular image was generated using Stable Diffusion. This audio, the script for this video was generated using ChatGPT. And Hayden is another tool that can animate your an image and make a video out of it. This is since I posted this, I don't know a few, yeah, August 6th, they released two more versions. Right now, it is so real that it is, uh, right now, you can actually see it, it might be a little artificial, but it is so real right now that you it, you will blow, blow away if you actually see what is possible right now. Can you make it? Hi there. I am a virtual character created using stable diffusion and then brought to life through Hey Jen. Soon, you'll have the chance to video chat with not just me, but any character in your imagination from your mobile phone. Sounds wild, doesn't it? But trust me, we're just getting warmed up. I am a virtual character created using and stable diffusion I just wanted and to then actually brought to say, light through hate. I just wanted to actually post something interesting about this. Right now, to generate this, it requires around 5-10 minutes in a very powerful computer. In one to two years, using our phones, this can be live generated. Can you think about a use case if it can be live generated? Meta, what can you give me one potential use case? If a person like this, a character like this, can be auto generated in your phone. That is all there. That is definitely there. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. So basically, you can have a virtual character and talk with that person, him or her, a proper companion, where you, you can actually talk to your phone, who will have memory of everything that you have talked with. That's all there. That's all there. We are in this space already. We don't know where we are going, but that thing is going to come. It is going to hit us very soon, probably in less than 12 months or maybe 20. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to explain. This is here already. And uh, as he mentioned, media is the second obvious thing. I'm, I'm predicting in less than 12 months, somebody from his... Uh, room will come out with a blockbuster movie completely shot internally in his computer from his mind it will actually come out and it is going to compete with the large cinema houses over here so all the thing the the things that are actually going to happen in the next 12 to 24 months is going to uh, blow your mind so yeah these are just the glimpses of it yeah Absolutely. So there is a quote that I really like. You're not going to be thrown out of your job by an AI, but you're going to be thrown out of your job by somebody who is using AI. So that's an interesting perspective that I had. So uh, anything that you're doing, try to actually add some elements of uh, generative AI or AI into it. I think it will help you. Yeah, will this be democratic? I mean, will everyone have the same level of AI, like uh, the most advanced system? Uh, 
uh, okay anybody else want to answer that question someone asked will this become the, the certainly a cost attack to it so a democracy Does anybody have an opinion on that? Someone is asking, can this become democratic and will everyone have AIs? Possible. I don't have an answer. Don't look at me. I don't have an answer. But uh, what I feel right now is, if you are going to, let's say, going to give this to everybody, and imagine tomorrow everybody is going to use ChatGPT. It's free, right? It's a free tier. What, do you know what will happen? They will have to switch off their service. Their, it, the compute cost is very, very high. The reason why they are able to actually run is because 0.1% or maybe less than that percentage of the world is actually using it. The compute cost for this is extremely high. But when more people comes, yeah, when more people... Yeah, exponentially, it, it actually goes up exponentially. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So the reason why I say, mentioned this is I had a meeting with the, the government and uh, they were asking, can we actually give something like ChatGPT to, to let's say 100,000 students or something like that? With our budgets, it is not possible. I mean, in, like at least in our state. Yeah, right now. Possibly in the future, of course. Definitely when hardware uh, numbers change, it will happen, but ro not right now. Definitely, it will come. It will come. I will give you one, um, uh, the, there, is a, there is a small issue with that. The difference between 50 years back, the story between 50 years back and right now is the change that happened in 50 years with technology changed, ha yeah, it's exponential, but it changed in an exponential manner. But we are at a different point in exponential. Three years or two years, 25 years back is not the exact same as two years right now. Imagine our government is saying, Okay, we will give 100,000 students, I don't know, GPU compute in, let's say, two years. That two years is effectively 20 years of the past. That's the difference, is what I feel. I could be wrong. Somebody, somebody might actually come and create a GPU that is very cheap and change these things, but definitely I don't know. It's just my thought. We have been discussing this in the company for a long, long time. So, yeah. The computing... Quantum computing is coming up in a high way, uh, like uh, not so famous countries have developed uh, smaller quantum computers than IBM. So that might change in the entire equation. You know? uh, it might be with the current technology and current limitation, there's high cost. But if there's a disruptor, it can happen, yeah, like yeah. ChatGPT. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know. So uh, it's a very fascinating and a deep concept. I don't want to touch that space. Uh, something that is very fascinating for me. But I know one thing. Uh, there are only a few classes of problems that we can actually solve with quantum computers. I'm not saying this is not one of it. Possibly you're right. Hopefully you're right. I'm not sure whether it is theoretically possible right now. That is the reason. It could be. No, right now it is not. Right? The current, the sort of problems that we are solving is not compatible with uh, quantum computers. I don't, I know, I know.
I, I don't but, have comments on that. So, but you're right. Uh, the military complex, the you know, military in- industrial complex has the bu- the deepest bu- budget in the world. So, if our government requires, let's say, an AI for the military, definitely tomorrow there will be no dearth for funding. So, unfortunately, the primary driver for innovation in US. I am not sure about that also because uh, for for the compute for the compute the current current budgets are massively large you are right but during that 10 years we don't have that technology that's the problem Yeah, so so let's let's actually take it uh, uh, offline. Yeah, yeah. maybe uh, we can switch on the light and I can't see anybody. Yeah, if we can switch on the lights. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, if you. No, I can't. One of the problems that I faced uh, while integrating large language models is that uh, when I when I ask questions like prompts, uh, it uh, it replies with uh, different kind of answers to the same prompt. So when I ask a question, uh, sometimes after after some time uh, when I ask the same question, it uh, generates a different answer. So that uh, chat GPT and uh, ac- uh, actually also lo- uh, used a Lama Lama two locally yeah so uh, i was trying to use that uh, inte- i was trying to integrate that uh, large language models for some of my problems so uh, how do you guys uh, uh, face or uh, solve that problem or do you guys face that problem uh, uh, so just to explain the question to the audience he was asking when chat gpt or a large language model was used he kept on finding different answers each time so uh, there is a reason for that it is actually on purpose there is a specific configuration uh, concept called seed the seed gets randomly created so when he created uh, the images in stable diffusion or even the responses what will happen is you can actually specify the seed seed is basically a random number so this random number changes this creates different type of answers each time not to change the complete meaning of it. For instance, if I ask you, wh- why do you think that, uh, let's say, wh- what do you like? So you might today say, I like a cat, right? The tomorrow, your configuration of your mind is slightly different. But you will not say, I don't like cat, but it might be a little different answer, something like that, right? So if anybody knows the <laughs> you can put the seed the same exactly because it becomes a fun pure function when the same thing every all the configurations are same it gets back the same thing yeah that is why what i am surprised Still, I think uh, you don't need, because the synonyms are not going to change. Maybe the order might change. Oh, you want to make sure that you get structured answer. That There is a different, that's a different question. There is a very clear way to do it. You can actually ask the model, I need structured data for the questions that I'm going to ask. Number one. Number two, then you give a pro- an example schema for it. Let's say a JSON schema or something like that. And then say, I need it in this format. And the third thing is, I don't need anything else. No instructions, nothing. Typically, it actually happens. So I've built something. 
I am using ChatGPT th- uh, 4-3-301. Th- it's a specific custom model that I'm using. Because the, as he mentioned, the current model somehow seems to perform a little poorly. Yeah, it is hallucinating. So we are actually using through API a model that was from March 31st or something. So its model's name is, if I remember right, 4-301. So that is a specific model that we are using. We, in fact, actually created a small um, web application for anyone. I think somebody, yeah, you are using it. So we have that. So anybody who wants to use it, you can choose the model from that. So you can use the previous model if you want. Any other questions? Yeah, so I feel like we can wind up. From my from my side as a conclusion, I feel like generative AI is like a knife. We can use it for good purpose. We can cut vegetables, fruits. We can use it for survival. But be careful when we are using those kinds of tools. And be responsible. Even with Lama 2, they have a guideline license agreements. There are like around 200 plus times they are specifying safety, safety, safety in that file. But still, we are not able to extract anything meaningful, safe things from that. So that's the only thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) Yeah, something like that. So be responsible with tools. We have like unlimited power in our hand right now with these uncensored models and big, big stuff. So be careful. That's the only thing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Avil. Uh, the session was great and it uh, went really well. And thank you, Jiku, for making it uh, more interesting. So I'm pleased to invite the Firepot 80 committee to present Amal with a small token of our gratitude. So I think uh, we can officially conclude the session. So it is just like
we thought of llama 2 and stable diffusion lot of up updates that is happening and we just want to br bring more awareness and bring people together of similar interest and firebot it is not just about one speaker coming and telling everything that is it is about knowledge co creation so people coming here will also have information they will be sharing it and also making friends of people of similar interest right so it is curating the entire technopark and bringing in people who are really passionate coming to work together and then become connected so networking is also part of it so those who want to stay back and continue discussion you can continue with that thank you so much